Hello, my name is Nikai Rimmer, and we are working on the comparison test. This is the last video, a set of three videos. This is the last one. This one covers the limit comparison test. Let's take a look at it. We have um, a series that you are given. We call that A sub n, the summation of A sub n. And you go out and get a series to compare it to. We'll call that series you go out and get, we call that B sub n. Now, you can't use this test if you have any negative terms. The limit comparison test and its partner, the direct comparison test, they are all contingent upon the fact that you have to have all the terms being positive. Okay, great. Now, make sure you know how, um, the one you go out and get. Make sure you know what it does. It, it does it converge or does it diverge? And then you're going to compare the one you have, the one you were given, to it. This comes into play when the inequality from the direct comparison test doesn't seem to work out right. You also could make this your go-to test and skip over the, the um, direct comparison test. It doesn't always work like the direct comparison test doesn't always work. Let's, say what it, let's see what it does say for you though. You don't care about an inequality. What you're gonna do is divide the two sequences. The, the, the formulas that are inside of the summations, they're actually sequences. We're going to divide them and take the limit as n goes to infinity. It doesn't really matter if you put the a sub n or the b sub n on the numerator, but if you get out a constant, it's guaranteed that constant is positive because all the terms are positive. And so if that's a finite positive constant, then we can with uh, we can be sure that the two series will behave alike. So whatever the B sub n series does, that is going to be what your A sub n series will do. All right, what if it's not a positive constant, finite number? What are your other options? If this limit as n goes to infinity on the ratio of these two sequences is zero, then that fact needs to be paired up with the fact that your B sub n series that you went out and got is convergent. These two facts together would lead to the, the fact that yes, your a sub n given series also is convergent. And then the third option is if this limit of the sequences, the ratio of the sequences is infinite. You need to pair that up with the fact that your b sub n diverges for you to say that your a sub n is also divergent. OK, so it's possible that you could be in a situation where you're not going to be able to use this test. If the limit is equal to zero, but you have a divergent B sub n, can't use this test. If the limit is equal to infinity, but you have a convergent B sub n, you're not going to be able to use this test. OK, great. Let's see it in action. In the last video, uh, we did some uh, compare, uh, direct comparison test examples. And the last one that we ended up doing, we couldn't use the direct comparison test on. So we're going to use it on this one. Uh, I switched it up a little bit. I put a 16 in there. <laughs> so um, so we <laughs> don't know why that's there. Just to come out nice with the square root. OK, so we're going to replace this. Our b sub n is going to get, get rid of the plus 1 as n goes to infinity. Who really cares about the plus 1? And we have n over n to the 3 halves. We can drop the 16. It's not necessary and have um, 1 over root n. OK, we'll divide these two. I think it works out nice that uh, I didn't want it to come out to be a 1. That's why I put the 16 in. OK, so when you divide this, you're going to multiply by the reciprocal. You're going to have this limit here. n to the 3 halves on top of 16 n cubed plus 1 underneath the square root. Limit as n goes to infinity. All right, what you're going to do is rewrite the n to the 3 halves is n cubed underneath the square root. So this whole thing is underneath the square root. And you could bring the limit on the inside if it exists. And then you could use um, back when you first did limits at infinity and you had a ratio of polynomials called a rational function and the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, then you could just look at the ratio of the leading coefficients and that would be your answer. So this is 1 16th. That's not the final answer, though. You have to take a square root, and we end up with one-fourth. Our limit is a finite constant, one-fourth. It means that they behave alike. 
What does your series do? Your visa bin, one over root in, that's a P series with P equals a half. Diverges. So A sub n also diverges. All right, great. That's our first use of the limit comparison test. Let's see another. 3n plus 4 on top of 2n plus 1 quantity cubed. What are we going to drop off? We're going to drop off the 4. We're going to drop off the 1. When we go get our B sub n, we'll be looking at 3n over 2n cubed, or 3n over n cubed, or just n over n cubed. So 1 over n squared. Our B sub n is the series of 1 over n squared. That's a P series. P equals 2. That's a convergent P series. We divide. You have to be good at taking limits at infinity to do this limit comparison test, of course. Multiply by n squared. We have 3n squared plus 4n squared. Uh, 3n cubed plus 4n squared on top of the uh, quantity of 2n plus 1 cubed. You don't have to cube this out. Same concept. It's a polynomial in the numerator. It's a polynomial in the denominator. The leading term is cubed on both of them. When the powers equal, it's the, co the ratio of the coefficients. That's not a 2 as a coefficient on n cubed in the denominator. That's a 2 cubed. So that's how you get 3 eighths so fast. And it's a finite constant. So they behave alike. And so therefore, the series will, you know, your series converges. So this series also converges. Limit comparison test. All right, great. Let's see it used on one final example. This is going to be a little bit tough algebraic. 1 plus 3 to the n over 4 plus 2 to the n. We can just look at it and see that. Who cares about plus 1? Who cares about plus 4? As n goes to infinity, this should behave like 3, oh, 3 to the n over 2 to the n, which is like 3 halves to the n. And that's divergent geometric series. The ratio is bigger than 1 in absolute value. But the limit is kind of tough to figure out. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. And we're going to distribute that in. Now, we can't use that rule of degree of numerator versus degree of denominator. These aren't polynomials. In this case, the, the, the general technique is to find what dominates in the denominator. In this case, it's going to be 6 to the n. And multiply through by it or divide out by it. Let's multiply by 1 over 6 to the n. Multiply, or let's say we factor it out. Maybe that'd be a better way to say it. Let's factor out 6 to the n. Or here I have it multiplied by 1 over 6 to the n, top and bottom. Why would we do that? The point is to make the denominator go to a constant and move all the action up to the numerator. Probably would have been best if I just factored out 6 to the n, but that's okay. <laughs> all right. And so we end up with uh, ones on the uh, second parts of the numerator and denominator. And in the in the first part of the numerator, first part of the numerator, we get one third to the n. Second part, um, the first part of the denominator, we get uh, one half to the n uh, times a four. Since these ratios are less than one, they end up going to zero. And we have a limit of one. That's okay, it doesn't matter the size of the constant, it just means that there is a constant. Therefore, they behave alike. You went out and got a divergent geometric series, so your series, who is just plus one, plus four, it's going to also diverge. And what we used was the limit comparison test. I don't have examples of when you have it equal to zero or when you have it equal to infinity, but just know that there's two other levels to the limit comparison test. If the limit is zero, make sure it's paired up with a convergent B sub n. If the limit is infinity, make sure it's paired up with a divergent B sub n. All right, thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm happy to help you through this Calc 2 journey. Um, please uh, comment down below, like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.